Okay, students, welcome to the third video of the series. And in this video, we are going to cover what does it mean to live in the globalized world. Okay, so we're going to cover the theme of globalization. So there's chapter 8, 9, 10, and 11, exploring different parts of globalization. Again, this one will help you to prepare for your factor essay. So I will unpack to you again uh, which are the factors in each chapter and briefly explain to you what each chapter is about. Okay, for more information on chapters, you do have to read your revision booklet or read the textbook. Okay, so this video doesn't become overly long. All right, so let's start. For chapter eight, what does it mean to be globalization? So globalization in a nutshell basically means countries, they are interdependent. They depend on each other. Uh, for example, for resources, businesses, they may depend on each, each other for resources. For people who are consumers, you may consume certain products and the product is supplied from different parts of the world. So we are talking about ideas, activities being connected as well as goods being connected. All right. And in this chapter, we are going to focus what causes globalization to happen. So this is the main topic. What caused globalization to become more frequent in today's uh, era? And there are three big reasons. I'm going to just show out all the points that you should know. Okay, first reason, transportation is more advanced. Second reason, MNCs are growing, becoming more trendy now. Third reason, technology is getting better. All three factors help you to explain how globalization is much more common. Uh, is there how they are driving globalization. So transportation is quite straightforward. Basically, in today's day and age, our transport is faster, bigger, more goods and people can travel a trip. So for example, your biggest plane, the, you can mention the A380, well, a very big plane can carry uh, hundreds of people at one time. You save transport costs, so people, goods can be moved around countries, about uh, between countries very easily. So it's very easy to connect them. And so these are some of the statistics how Singapore is connected with other parts of the world. Okay, so I mentioned something like technology. You want to talk about high-speed trains in certain countries? Yes, you can talk about high-speed trains. Okay, uh, MNCs, growth of MNCs. So MNCs are businesses that does business in more than one country. And the benefit, I mentioned this in class before, because maybe some parts of the world, they have uh, easier to produce certain parts of your product. Okay, maybe some parts of the world, they have the raw materials, uh, another part of the world, they have better workers to put the materials together. So there are benefits to having your business in more than one country okay? because people have different expertise. Okay, And there are millions of people, of jobs for people. Right? You need manpower. There are many different parts of the world with manpower. And MNCs may exchange ideas with one another. And they also help us facilitate exchange of ideas and activities. Goods from one company can get shipped to many countries, so like Starbucks, okay? The coffee bean is roasted in one country, but it can be packed and delivered to stores around the world. Okay, so this is, you want to talk about McDonald's, same thing also. Okay, so when there are more MNCs, they are moving businesses, okay? They are moving the products, they are moving their workers all around the world, okay? With bases all around the world, the world is now more interconnected. There is more globalization. Last but not least, okay, advances in technology. Technology here, we are talking about communication technology. Communication technology helps to drive globalization because if you are living on different parts of the world, you have to make sure that these people are different parts of the world, they can talk to one another easily. Okay, so that the distance doesn't become an issue. So we also, you know, COVID at us, Zoom, how important Zoom was. Zoom is able to bring businesses uh, from different parts of the world together. Okay, so you can talk about smartphone, you can talk about the internet, you can talk about things like Zoom, uh, being able to connect people and let them communicate around the world. And this will help to facilitate the exchange of ideas. So if I'm working in a company, I can have, a, uh, let's, say I do, let's say I work at Starbucks, I want to come up with a new drink, Starbucks is USA. I came up with a new drink, a new chocolate drink. Okay, I can send this idea, the recipe, all the way to my Starbucks chain in Singapore and let teach them how to make it. So I can exchange idea. I can 
make sure that my businesses, my MNCs can run seamlessly. Okay, can coordinate and run seamlessly. Okay, chapter nine. So now we are looking at some of the problems uh, with globalization and how we can deal with it. Okay, and we are looking to look at economic impact of globalization. So chapter 10, we will look at culture. Chapter 11, we will look at security. So chapter 9, economic. What are some problems to the economy with globalization? Okay, so what are some economic impact of globalization? So remember, globalization, it means every country's economy, they are kind of connected. They are kind of dependent on one another. If one country do well, another country may do well also. Or if one country do well, the other country can do worse also. So it is connected basically. Now, for the impact, we can look at impact at three different levels. We can look at the impact on the countries. So for example, if you see uh, one impact, positive impact, okay, this the economy can grow because with globalization, countries are connected. There's more trading. Business can expand. There could be more jobs. Then business coming to the country, you can collect tax from them. We we did a Dyson case study, right? If Dyson comes to Singapore, we can maybe collect tax from Dyson. It helps the government to get more money. Okay. People get to enjoy goods and services. Same thing. We get McDonald's, we get Starbucks, we get Dyson. We get a variety of goods and services from all over the world. We can improve our life. Okay. Improvement in countries' infrastructure. Okay. So Singapore can be connected through basically uh, investment. Foreign direct investment, foreign companies can directly invest in Singapore. So, like for example, Alibaba invested it is six million dollars in Singapore's Sing Post to help our Sing Post become more better. Okay, we may also sign free trade agreements with other parts of the world to make sure that we can trade uh, without tax. That means in the past, when countries trade with one another, they will have to tax each other because we don't want trade, we want to protect our own local business. But now we have all these free trade agreements. We can trade other countries without fearing that our our goods are being taxed at a high rate. Okay, so for example, US have a free trade agreement in Singapore, which means if I in electronics, if I want to sell a Singaporean electronic, I don't know, maybe like creative. We want to sell my uh, Chinese dictionary to okay, why was <laughs> sell my dictionary to USA? My dictionary won't be taxed very high price. There won't be any tax. I'll really sell it at my market price. Okay. Negative impact, obviously, there's also Sometimes not always good. Sometimes they invest, they do not give us limited job opportunities. Remember, we mentioned how uh, in our case study, if Dyson come here, they may not always provide job opportunities for locals. Maybe they'll bring their own workers to Singapore to work. So another impact, okay, FTA, it may lead to more competition. Okay, FTA works both ways. If you have signed an FTA, a free trade agreement with Singapore, Singapore can have an easier time selling USA, but it also means USA company has an easier time to sell in Singapore because they are not taxed. So if I'm a Singapore business, I may feel more competition from uh, different countries who I sign an FTA with. Okay, so it can work. It can be a benefit. It can be a cost. Okay. Negative impact. Sometimes the economy they can suffer together. For example, when the economy is very bad, one country's economic crisis can affect other countries' economic crisis. For example, in 2008, financial crisis, and Singapore have to uh, face a lot of challenges because when one country's economy is doing poorly, you can imagine they, their citizens are a bit poorer. They may not buy goods from, say, Singapore, and Singapore, you know, we suffer also because our business for selling overseas is affected. Okay, countries may withdraw their investment, maybe they take back their money in part in Singapore, and it may affect our businesses, our country may suffer as a result. Okay, that means when one country suffers, we may suffer together with them. That's why we say we are independent. Okay, another way you can look at economic impacts on companies. Okay, so why do we separate it on impact of companies? Because sometimes in my essay, I may ask you, uh, Globalization, is it more positive impact on the country or is it more negative impact on the country? So paragraph one, positive impact on the country. Paragraph two, negative impact on the country. Or I can cover your question. Is globalization a positive impact on the company more or is it a negative impact on the company more? Uh, if I show you the last part very quickly, is globalization a 
a positive impact on individuals more or is going to generate more a cost for individuals. So I can come up with different essays based on the different groups we are looking at, whether it's countries, companies, or individuals. Okay, so we look at companies, same thing. Uh, one positive impact is you can have my market share because goods, you can now transport your goods. You can now communicate with your overseas bases with technology very easily. Country can expand their operation to countries. They may be able to hire and bring in uh, uh, countries with a lower labor cost. For example, we would like to say in the past, Singapore like to take in Chinese workers because they are willing to accept lower pay. So this may benefit your companies because your workers can be paid lesser. Okay, you can also sell your products to other countries now. So in Singapore, you do not sell to our five million people. You can sell to the entire world potentially. So you can sell more, earn more, and it's better for your company. Higher profit, higher market share. That means you get to sell more. Okay, negative impact. It can be lower. Same thing, you can have more competition. Remember, you are not always selling the world. You can access the world. The world can access Singapore also. So if Singapore, for example, we have small and medium enterprises. If big companies or overseas come in, we may lose out, okay? Because uh, our market is very small. We may have a shortage of expertise, a shortage of labor. So think about it like uh, if I have run a small coffee shop, but Starbucks come in, Starbucks, uh, may come in and uh, destroy my own small cafe okay because Starbucks cafe is more popular than my own if I sell my own cafe okay, I may lose I might lose my customers to all these foreign companies coming in who are competition okay there's a shortage of labor. maybe people instead of I won't be maybe I, maybe in my small cafe I cannot hire workers because the Starbucks they can pay better they can hire more of the other workers okay and SMEs, they may not be able to earn sufficient profits and they may close down because all these foreign companies are too strong. Okay. Okay. Of course, there are some solutions. Lah. Okay. But uh, I think for the factor, as a more important focus, what's the impact? So it can be good. It can also be bad. Competition is both a good thing and a bad thing. Okay. Lastly, for individuals, it's a bit similar. You can earn higher income. No longer you are restricted to work in one country because you can transport you can technology you can move to one country very easily you can also uh, work remotely in other countries so i can work for a u.s company maybe from singapore that's also possible so people can look for jobs overseas very easily and you can go for jobs with you can choose from a wider pool of jobs stuff you can better job prospects you can even earn more income but the flip side is you might also lose income because remember just like you can go overseas other people from overseas they can also come to singapore they may be competition for jobs. Maybe they might steal your job. Maybe they might demand lower pay and therefore you might lose your job to foreigners. Okay, so companies may even close down okay, and move to cheaper countries. So if you have a job in Singapore, for example, in Uniqlo, they may close down your branch Uniqlo and move to somewhere cheaper like Vietnam, like China and so on. And you may, as a result, lose your jobs. Okay, so globalization can be both positive and negative impact on countries, companies and individuals depending on what we are considering, okay? Now, how can you respond to tension arising from cultural impact? Now we are looking at cultural effect. How is composition good for our culture? How is composition bad for our culture? And we're gonna look at a few things. We're gonna look at uh, both homogenization and hybridization. First, let's look at homogenization. What does homogenization mean? Okay, homogenization basically means all the local cultures, they are changed by foreign culture. They become similar, okay? The foreign culture become dominant. Local culture become less important. So a very common example we like to say is fast food culture. McDonald's going to country, people start to like eating fast food, they may start to not like eating local food. Okay, this is a bit exaggerated, but it's, it's really quite true, okay? People like to drink Coke instead of drinking Say, you know, whatever local drink they have. Okay. So it does our entertainment. Okay. Uh, America, okay, they have a very unique culture. They express their they value their individuality. Okay. So individuals, sometimes we may like the American culture, we may like to watch Hollywood shows, we may like to watch Netflix shows from America. Okay. And American dominance worldwide. Okay. But as a result, what does that mean? If everyone likes to watch American shows in Singapore, what does that mean? Singapore people may not like to watch Singapore shows, okay? And it might 
affect your identity lah. Okay, for example, in Singapore, we don't we try not to talk about uh, drugs. We try not to talk about LGBT issues very much. But in America, maybe they are more open to talking about these things. Okay, so if Singapore people they start to watch these shows, Singapore with all these references, is it necessary a good thing? Okay. So you can see an American show, maybe they talk about marrying for love, living independently. So it might be a clash with local culture. Lah. Okay. Same thing with Korea. Korea culture also has become very popular, you know, through K-pop, uh, a lot of, uh, so many generations of Korean stars, and they are not accessible worldwide. Okay, so Korean can, they can export their culture to other countries. Lah. So you can imagine if other countries, everyone, they love Korean music. Okay, there are a lot of fans in these countries. What will happen to the local scenes? Okay, if everyone likes Korean films and drama, what will happen to local film and drama? Okay, so there are sometimes people that resist entertainment homogenization. For example, France, they make sure, okay, TV, 40% of the show are in French. That means nobody watch America, uh, not everyone. Uh, not the the French show are protected like, basically, okay. Uh, in Japan you can see, uh, people protested in front of Japanese television headquarters because they are ha unhappy with too many Korean shows being shown. They want to protect Japanese show. In China they have, may have a limit only a number of foreign films can be shown in, uh, China from time to time. Okay, that could be imported purely cultural backup by foreign films to be shown. So sometimes they may show shows that the Chinese government do not think is aligned with their values. They may not allow the shows to be shown. Recently, Malaysia go and ban uh, Thor, the movie the Thor, you know, the one, the lightning guy, because they thought there are something that seems sounds quite homosexual, so they ban it. Okay, so these things can happen. Okay, because they want to make sure that foreign culture do not dominate local culture. So local culture, they reject. Uh, they, they don't want locals to reject local culture, like, basically, because they think local culture is a very big part of our identity. Our values are very important to ourselves. So that's why some countries, they resist cultural homogenization. They don't want everyone to be the same. They don't want everyone to follow the foreign culture. Same thing is with food. Uh, America, we like to say, okay, America fast food, very quick, uh, good taste, very popular worldwide. Uh, almost every country can find fast food chains like McDonald's. Okay. Individuals like it because very convenient. American dominate fast food culture. Okay. But people also resist it. For example, in Italy, uh, some people protested against McDonald's because they think it threatens maybe Italian food. Okay. Uh, so some people also resist. Okay, they want the local culture to be preserved, so they protest against all this foreign culture being exported to other countries. In Singapore, it's not so extreme. I think we are quite open to uh, foreign culture coming in, but at the same time, we also make sure we protect our local stuff. Like, uh, I don't think MediaCorp is going to close down anytime soon. Although MediaCorp, we may sometimes on our local TV shows, shows from Taiwan, from America, and so on, but we still make sure that at least Singapore shows get a shot. Okay. So the next thing we look at is hybridization. Hybridization is not is not similar to homogenization. Remember, homogenization just not mean everyone became the same, but hybridization means that it's a mix, local mix with foreign. They are blended. So as we care, huh? just now homogenization, everything became similar to the foreign culture. Foreign culture become dominant. Okay, but now hybridization we mix foreign with local culture so same thing you can look in terms of music in food in entertainment for example in music you can see okay salsa it's a latin american music there's a mix of uh, american with uh, african influence okay american and chinese filmmakers may collaborate to produce a show together called transformers uh, in terms of uh, culture they blend together with local culture so that uh, individuals who like foreign culture and they, who are familiar, they get the best of both worlds basically. Okay, and hopefully this means they also get a wider range of entertainment products and more importantly, make it more easy for people to accept foreign culture. So if I'm a Chinese country, if I'm China, I may not like Hollywood shows, but if the Hollywood shows show Chinese culture, for example, uh, recently got 
Chinese Marvel character like Shang-Chi, right? Okay, they might be more willing to accept this kind of Hollywood show because it's got a bit of Chinese culture in it, right? Okay, Kung Fu Panda, uh, sometimes like homogenization, even though hybridization is a mix, sometimes people still do not like it. Why? Because they say when you mix it with my local culture, you are also destroying my local culture. For example, Kung Fu Panda, where there were people in China who actually resisted Kung Fu Panda because they said it's not an accurate portrayal of Chinese culture. Panda is supposed to be cute, very sleepy, but they made Panda look like so active creatures like this. So some people feel very insulted that their local culture is mixed with foreign culture, okay? And they think that their culture is not accurately portrayed as an inaccurate portrayal of their culture. They may think, oh, your show, you stereotype our culture. For example, if I show a, a American Hollywood film, if my Chinese characters in a Hollywood film, every Chinese in there have very small eyes. Oh, the Chinese may feel very offended because hey, not all Chinese have small eyes. Why does all your Chinese character in the film have small eyes? They may feel insulted also. Okay, and disrespected. Same thing with food. Uh, McDonald can try to mix different culture. Uh, this is a very common example. Nasi lemak burger, chicken porridge, okay, Western meat with Eastern. Okay, it may be popular. It may seem novel, very attractive because people hey, think it's quite an interesting, very creative solution. People who like foreign food and local food may like it both, okay? And people may therefore accept it, okay? But at the same time, people can also be resistant, okay? For example, Lay's potato chips, they introduce a new hybrid like blueberry and spicy fish. Some people might not like this flavor, others they dislike. Even Naslema burger, some people they dislike Naslema burger, okay? So people also can resist because they think you are lose. It's not traditional, lah. you mix it with foreign, doesn't make it any more traditional and they think it may threaten local food itself just like how when you mix uh chinese movie and american movie you make chinese food and american food is it really still preserving chinese food is it really american food hard to say okay all right last chapter we are looking at the security impact now okay our organization just now we talk about economic impact we talk about culture now we talk about security impact of globalization how does globalization affect our security okay we're going to look at different level country level company and individual okay so first of all let's look at cyber security okay let me just show all the points it's easier okay okay it's a lot of points but let me cover one by one huh? So first one, we want to talk about what are some of the cybersecurity challenges. Okay, with more technology, computers are more connected. There's a lot of information which is stored, which may be confidential. And because they are connected, right, people can get hacked. In the past, when the internet is not advanced, people do not store a lot of information online. There's not a lot to steal online. But nowadays, things are connected. You can get hacked. Your Instagram can get hacked because everyone is connected now. Okay. You may lose your data. Okay. Um, impact. Okay, impact is one of the bigger parts that I have to cover. Okay, so impact, like a, like with economy, you can look at government, you can look at companies, organization, you can also look at how individuals are impacted. At the government level, okay, sometimes, okay, you have information you store. For example, our government, we like to collect information. We store your sync fast, password. We store your, uh, how much you save. We store how much CPF you have. We all have all this information. We store your health records somewhere. But they are all stored online. And sometimes other countries, they may target each other. They may try and steal the information for each other. And this may make people lose trust in the country mm -hmm. or government. If people start to feel like, oh, you know, the government is not protecting my information properly, not saving my, so not saving my information properly, I may not trust. I may not want to give my information. Example, WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks leaked a lot of uh, American military information and it threatens, some people say it threatens the national security of America because, for example, now they a lot of people all over the world, they know where are the American bases. They know what America is doing in other countries. People may no longer trust American and their military so much now. Okay? Organizations get affected. You see this OCBC. This one is a very recent example. Okay. In December, OCBC got attacked by hackers and many millions of people, they lost their money for the bank accounts. Okay. So businesses can get affected. 
they can steal their trade secret. For example, maybe someone can attack KFC and try and steal what is KFC recipe. Or maybe they can hang to their bank account and try and steal their money. Okay, competitors may use the trade secrets to make rival goods. So maybe I may, uh, using an example of KFC, maybe I can hack KFC and create my own, uh, own fried chicken store that can rival KFC. And companies can lose money and sales if their secrets are stolen. Really? Individuals also can be affected. Okay, your personal computers, your smartphone, social media have a lot of data that can be stolen. People may pretend to be you. Your Instagram can get hacked very easily. They may pretend to be you and commit other crimes. Maybe go and, go and scam more other people. Okay, and it can affect people because you know, creates a lot of anxiety, creates a lot of frustration. You lose a lot of your data. People might no longer trust you. They may think, "Wow, oh, this person don't know how to take care of herself." They may lose their trust in you. Okay. Example, okay, people may hack your identity, create a Facebook account, they may contact your friends and ask for password, they may try and hack more accounts. You, you all know your Instagram, now. Instagram recently a lot have been hacked this week. So it creates a lot of frustration and anxiety, okay, because you need to make effort to tell your friend and all that. Okay, and okay, managing security can also, okay, so the essay maybe they can be on, um, Cybersecurity, maybe they can ask you which is a bigger impact of cybersecurity. Is it impact of government or is it impact of organization? Which one is a greater impact? So maybe they can ask you which one is a bigger impact. Okay, is it individuals? Is it company? Is it company? Okay. Managing security. Okay, this part I think is quite straightforward. We covered it in class recently, so you can read by yourself. But basically, at the country level, you can do something and strengthen your cybersecurity infrastructure. Make sure that your database is not so easy to be hacked. Okay, you can also adopt measures and raise awareness to tell people not to be scammed. You can collaborate with other countries, share information to fight all these problems together. You can collaborate with companies. For example, if the company's uh, social media is not very strong, the data is not very strongly safe, the government can go and help companies to uh, make their security better. Okay, we can also encourage individuals with raise awareness, tell everyone to set stronger password, have firewall and all that. Okay, so there are many solutions. So uh, you can even have an essay, maybe they ask you, uh, which is more important to manage cybersecurity? Is it collaborating with other country or is it encouraging individual responsibility? Which one is more important? So again, as long as there are all these branches, I can usually pick two and just set an essay question based on it. All right. Okay, so the last part, we are looking at terrorism. We are still under security, but we are looking at the issue of terrorism. Just now was cyber security. Now we look at terrorism, you know, like bombs and things like that. So terrorism can be a challenge because, okay, nowadays, uh, globalization, just now we talk about advancement in technology, right? There's more internet. Terrorists can spread their violent ideologies. They can recruit followers. They can plan their attacks, okay? They can transfer money very easily. Okay, internet, you can spread, example, they can spread their fake version of Islam to try and convert people and join their cause. Uh, ISIS did that recently also. They may have members from all the world, they may plan their attacks, for example, 9 11, it was a very sophisticated planning to make sure it happens and they may transfer money. Okay, so what is the impact? So we can look at, let's look at the branches. So for impact, we have political, economic, and social. So again, essay question, maybe we'll ask you, transnational terrorism, is political impact bigger than economic impact? Is economic impact more important, more devastating than social impact? Which one is more important? And you must be able to explain what each of them, <coughs> excuse me, you must be able to explain what each of them mean. So let me go through them uh, quite quick, okay? So political impact terrorism, Political, we are talking about how the country can be affected usually. So government, okay, they are, can give they can get very wary. Okay. As my USA got wary of combination used by Al-Qaeda to attack. Okay. So they have to the government has to spend a lot of time, you know, removing online information. Because in the past, maybe terrorism, where there's not much terrorism, you can post a lot of things online and you feel quite safe about it. But now with uh, people stealing all this information using for very bad purposes, uh, government may have to spend time making sure that they do not post anything that is considered harmful to the country. Okay, uh, can we back quite straightforward? Uh, when terrorists attack other people, they attack your infrastructure, 
they attack your uh the you can cause loss of money to repair and rebuild as well when 9 11 happened the twin towers collapse obviously it's a very negative effect on the country because financial markets may be affected maybe people might think your country is not safe anymore and they withdraw their investment so it can hurt the country okay so you can see for the case of the 9 11 attacks billions of dollars were spent to repair the damage caused by 9 11. Social impact, okay. People may fear terrorism. People may start uh, having distrust with one another. You may not trust whether your neighbor is a terrorist. You may not trust certain ethnic groups, whether they are safe people or not. So, for example, in terrorism, uh, in 9 11, right? After 9 11, we all know uh, Muslims uh, all over the world got a bit targeted. Okay, people may become suspicious. They may be anti Islamic hate crime being committed. To, for people to because they did not trust so how do we do it okay we have preventive measures we also have protective measures we also have responsive measures so again um, look at this branching okay maybe i can say an essay question is preventive measure more important or is protective measure more important or is responsive measure more important at solving the threat of terrorism? So you must be able to explain what each of these measures they are. So protective measure means secure borders. So having your, making sure your passport is very secure, making sure that there's biometric, maybe they'll check your eyes when you go to customs. Okay, USA, maybe make sure certain countries, certain people cannot fly to the country. Okay, so, other ways, collaborate with countries to protect yourself. Collaboration like ours young counter terrorism shop. So there are a lot of examples. Just take one and use. Okay, don't need to remember all. Okay, protective measures within the country. We can have surveillance on key places. Set out your CCTV. Jurong Island have Coast Guard, have police guarding important sensitive places. In some countries, they have laws like detention without trial. In Singapore, we have the Internal Security Act. If there's a suspected terrorist, we can arrest them. Or lastly, we can consider responsive measures. If a terrorist act was to happen, can you handle the, the consequences? So having emergency preparedness, exercise, doing drills, exercise heartbeat, exercise North Star, you know, doing drills in school can maybe help you prepare for a terrorist attack. Okay. So this includes doing drills with other countries like multinational emergency preparedness exercises. So, okay, they you may ask, they may ask you which of these measures are, which group of measures are more important. So you must know roughly what the key terms mean, protective, preventive, responsive. Okay, so last slide. Okay, these are some sample question on uh on globalization. So again, I'm gonna point out what are the factors. So which are the two paragraphs you should be writing and what is the focus of the question. So development in transport versus growth of MNC. Okay, factor one, factor two. So each paragraph, which one is driving globalization more? So which one is creates more globalization? So one factor, one paragraph each. Advancement in technology versus growth of MNC. Which one is more contributing to globalization? Again, one paragraph each for each factor. With globalization, economic impact of countries pose a greater challenge compared to economic impact of companies. So on countries is factor one, impact on companies is factor two. Which one is a challenge? Okay. So we have two paragraphs. Globalization result in more benefits than challenge. So paragraph talk about benefits of globalization. Paragraph two talk about challenge of globalization. Two countries. This is we want to talk about countries. How does country benefit? How is countries challenged by globalization? Do you think mobility in global economy provides more opportunities than challenges? So opportunities, paragraph one, challenges, paragraph two. Who are we looking at? We're looking at individuals in the global economy. So economy impact on individuals, opportunities versus challenges. Do you think hybridization in entertainment has a greater impact on society than homogenization? So hybridization, one paragraph homogenization on entertainment, one paragraph. What are we talking about? We're going to talk about their yeah, impact on society. Do you think transnational terrorism is a more serious threat than cyber security? So transnational terrorism, talk, paragraph one, cyber security threat, paragraph two. What are you going to talk about? You're going to explain how are they a serious threat? 
okay, and you have time, then you compare. But no time, at least write two paragraphs on one of each factor. Do you think cybersecurity threat has a more damaging impact than on businesses than or government? So cybersecurity threat is the topic. We are going to see whether the impact on government, paragraph one, impact on business, paragraph two. Okay, so I can tweak the question like this and ask you the different stakeholders. Okay, just now you see trust national terrorism versus cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is the factor. But now I tweak over cybersecurity become the focus. But the factor is the government and versus the business, which is a bigger impact. So the question can be tweaked like this. Do you think controlling the border is more effective preventive measure to manage it than collaboration? So controlling border, paragraph one, versus collaborating in countries, paragraph two. Which one is a more effective preventive measure? This is the focus. Do you think surveillance, okay, paragraph one, is a more effective way to manage transition than indefinite detention? Paragraph two. So tell me why is surveillance? Tell me why is indefinite detention? And how are they effective ways to manage terrorism? Last but not least, do you think preventive measures have a greater impact than protective measures? Preventive measures, number one, protective measures, paragraph two. Explain how are they deterring terrorism, preventing terrorism from happening. Okay, so thank you for watching all the three videos. I hope you found some of them useful, at least me showing what are all the factors. Okay, so the branches, there are many branches, there are many factors you must know, but the key thing is you must try to understand what they mean and be able to use your own words and give examples. Okay, and going through all these possible essay questions with you, I really hope you know how to pick up the factors how to identify what are the two factors and which is the question focus, okay? Which is the link, you factor for which, the factor must link to which question focus. I hope you are able to identify that in the question, okay? So best of luck to you in your revision, all right? And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, all right? That, goodbye. Thank you for watching.